Hi, am I in the air? Do I have everybody's attention now? Do I have everybody's attention now? Don, I got you. Don, Do I have everybody's Sunday attention night. now? You put them cameras on me, then you must be willing To get that heart touched, this a must-see feeling The news ain't good, then it must be villain So I say it's that grounded, I don't trust these ceilings Spread across your nose, and I'm on your air Highest max on the cloud, am I in the air? Sunday night's prime time, I flex my better Voltron transform to DX Don Mega and Austin, you probably think I'm nice Cause I slow like a stream to your wireless device And the smoke full of steam on any given night, I'll show up like a piece of any given slice. Uh, and for the latest and what is best by I tune in and tune the rest out, Don. You gotta tell them, am I in the clear? Is this thing gone? Am I on the air? On the air. Well, 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 welcome back, my friends. My name is Mega Ashante. Uh, welcome, everybody, to a new episode of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega. I am your host, and I'm so happy that you are here to join me tonight to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, non-spoiler reviews, you come right here to Am I on the Air. We're broadcasting live from the Red Dragons Radio Studios here in lovely Arizona on this Tuesday, May the 23rd. It is season 26, episode 19. Tonight's show is titled, I Need Receipts. We're going to be breaking down the news from May 17th through May 23rd. So strap on in. And let's get her going. I'm going to start things off with a little plug because we dropped an impromptu. Am I still on the air? Spoiler review. And no, I'm not talking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which we did do a couple weeks ago. It's very rare that we do two of these in the same month, but it's summer movie season, baby. So yes, we do have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 up. If you haven't listened to it, make sure you check it out. But we dropped a brand new one on Saturday, and that is for Fast X. Now, I'm going to talk Fast X here real quick in a non-spoiler way. But I wanted to let you all know that we did do an Am I Still on the Air spoiler review for Fast X. Myself, friggins, peeps. As always, we assembled the team. We got together. We went live on the YouTube channel Saturday night. And we broke down Fast X for about an hour and a half. It was a ton of fun to talk about. Really talking about the whole franchise as a whole and where we're at here and where we're going moving forward. So if you haven't listened to the spoiler review yet, make sure you check it out. It is available in two formats. We have it in video form on the YouTube page. There's also a playlist on the YouTube page that says Am I Still on the Air? So make sure you click that to not only watch this one, but everything else that we've done. But if you'd like to just listen to the MP3, it is right here on this same podcast feed. Just look for the Am I Still on the Air episode that says Fast X Spoiler Review. Super easy to find, and I hope you enjoy it. It was a ton of fun to talk about. So, speaking of Fast X, that is our movie review of the week. The 10th installment of the Fast and Furious franchise. And you know what really sucks is that we really should have called this one fast 10 your seat belts that's what i was hoping for but we did not get that name <laughs> so fast x baby the end of the road begins that's right because this is a planned part one of a two-part finale now there's a lot of speculation going around online that there's going to become a trilogy it's going to be a three-part finale now that is something vin diesel said on the press tour he kind of let it slip he said you know hey The studio was so happy with this one that they came to me and they said, can we make it a trilogy? So he's making it sound like it is. That is not official. I've had some people reach out to me and be like, so when's the third movie coming out? Third movie is not official. What is official is this one and part two, which part two does not come out till 2025. They did not film these movies back to back. So there's going to be a gap here because they're still writing part two. And, of course, there's a writer's strike right now, so hopefully that's resolved soon so they can get back to writing this thing. 
And um, yeah, and then they got to film it and it won't be out to 2025. So this movie, even though I'm talking non-spoiler, I'm going to let you know it ends on a cliffhanger because this is a part one of a two-part movie. So um, we need that second part. And I'm a little PO'd that I got to wait till 2025 to see part two. Um, But this one here, you know, this franchise has been going on for over 20 years at this point. 10 films, even a spinoff with Hobbs and Shaw. Um, this movie had gone into, into production and it was being directed again by Justin Lin, who has done most of the fast movies. And then two weeks into them starting to film this thing, Justin Lin bounced out, uh, due to mental health issues and some other things going on. And the search was on for a new director and Louis Leterrier stepped in a great director here. He's done a lot of fun movies, uh, worked with Jason Statham before in the transporter movies. Um, he's done a lot of stuff. He directed the incredible Hulk for the MCU for God's sakes. Uh, so he steps in and he finishes this film and I think he did a great job. I think he stepped in and if you didn't know any better, you would have thought this was Justin Lin again. He just really had the aesthetic. He knew what he was filming. He knew what he was doing and, um, it came out really, really well. Uh, the synopsis of this film, over many missions against impossible odds, Dom Toretto and his family have outsmarted, outnerved, and outdriven every foe in their path. Now they confront the most lethal impotent they've ever faced, a terrifying threat emerging from the shadows of the past, who is fueled by blood revenge and who is determined to shatter this family and destroy everything and everyone that Dom loves forever and of course we're talking about jason momoa's new villain character dante reyes uh dante hey i'm dante ashante uh i will say this guys jason momoa's uh dante is the best villain the fast series has ever had he's incredible he's so good he steals this movie hands down um and i joked on the spoiler review that I just feel like when they went to him and they said, would you do it? He said, I'll do it on one case. And that's that you just let me do my thing. And they just said, sure, here's the premise. Here's what we want you to kind of do. And you do it however the hell you want to do it. And he just improvised this entire movie. That's how I feel coming out of this because he was so flamboyant and over the top, but he was menacing at times when he needed to be. He was incredible, and I felt like they just let him loose and said, do your thing, and it works. And, of course, you've got the incredible original crew coming back. You've got Vin Diesel, obviously, as Dominic Toretto. you got uh, Michelle Rodriguez coming back as Letty. Tyrese coming back as Roman. Ludacris back as Tej. Uh, we got Ramsey back. Uh, N- uh, Natalie Emmanuel. Of course, Jordana Brewster back as Mia. We got Han back, played by Sung Kang. Uh, Scott Eastwood pops back up in this one as Little Nobody. We got new additions, right? We got Brie Larson coming in as Mr. Nobody's daughter. We have Alan Richson stepping in here as a new ba- as a new baddie. Um, you know, it just works. It works, man. The new cast, the old cast. Of course, John Cena is back as Jacob Toretto. Um, and we're off to the races, baby. What I will say about this movie is that it's so balls to the wall. It is so over the top. And if you're somebody that has had it with this franchise and said, you know what, it's too over the top, I can't do it anymore, I understand. But if you're somebody who doesn't mind and can really just kind of put that to the back of your head and say, I just want to go watch a really good action movie and enjoy some fun and some ridiculousness and have a popcorn flick, this is your movie, guys. This is your movie. Um, This is Fast and Furious. This I will say it dials down some of the stuff they did in F9, but it's still Fast and Furious. There's still several things they do in this movie where you kind of roll your eyes and you're like, come on. But at the same time, you just enjoy it, right? Because this is the 10th movie. You know what you're getting. You know what you're get. You know what you're getting. You know what they're doing. And you try to just have fun with it. And I had a ton of fun with it. The action is incredible. The hand-to-hand fighting is incredible. Every time something's going on, this movie just has such a high octane pace. Um, it never dragged. It's two hours and 22 minutes long, and it just flies by because this movie starts and it goes and never really slows down. 
Um, and at the end of the day, I really enjoyed my ass off at this. Is it a great movie, technically speaking? No. But is it fun? Does it have incredible action? Does it have incredible set pieces? Um, does it hit you in the feel sometimes? Yes. And that's Fast X, baby. So do it for the family and go check this one out on the biggest screen you possibly can. I give Fast X four cars out of five. Four NOS cans out of five. I really, really enjoyed it. I can't give it five stars just because some of the stuff is so ridiculous. I got to knock it a little bit for being so out there. But at the same time, this is what summer movie season is all about. And... I wouldn't mind going to see this one again. I love this franchise, and I really, really dug this one. So that's what I got, guys. Four out of five stars. Make sure you check it out and check out our spoiler review after you've seen the movie. Okay, over on the TV side, I don't really have anything new. I'm going to just really briefly, because I'm still technically under embargo, I hinted at it on last week's episode that I started watching the new Arnold Schwarzenegger show, FUBAR, which hits Netflix. This week on the 25th. Now, for whatever reason, Netflix still has an embargo on this thing. Literally up to the 25th. So, I can't put out a review um, on it yet. So, I will drop an Am I Still on the Air and kind of speak to it on the 25th at midnight when I can talk about it. But I did because it is coming out Friday and this is my last episode before the weekend. So, I'm just really quickly going to say... I enjoyed it, and I think you should watch it. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger's new show. It's an action comedy. I'm not going to dig in any deeper. I don't want to get in trouble, but thumbs up. I enjoyed it. I finished the whole season, and I think you'll enjoy it if you're an Arnold fan. So I'll get into that more on the Am I Still on the Air. Uh, Not Am I Still on the Air, but the Quick Bite. Am I on the Air Quick Bite? And, uh, And then obviously we'll break it into it a little bit more on next week's episode, okay? All right, that's what I got from a review standpoint. There are other new shows that have come out uh, that I'm looking to get into. It's just been super, super busy. Uh, Obviously, a lot of shows are starting to wrap up. Season finales are starting to hit, so it'll give me more time to dig in some of the other stuff that I've been waiting to start. All right, let's talk box office. Coming in at number 10, it's Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, which once again is now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Number nine is Blackberry. Number eight is Hypnotic. Number seven is Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Um, Number six is John Wick Chapter 4, which, by the way, hit digital today, so you can buy or rent it on VOD starting today. Number five is Evil Dead Rise, which you can also buy or rent. Number four is Book Club, The Next Chapter. Number three, Super Mario Brothers, which you can now buy or rent on VOD. Number two, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Getting bumped after a couple good solid weeks at number one. And even this week, man, it only had a 47% drop, which is incredible. So people still go in to support Guardians, which is awesome. It's closing in on that 300 million mark uh, domestically. And number one, Fast X, bringing in $67 million here in the U.S. But the big story here is almost $320 million worldwide just over the weekend. That is a massive worldwide hit. A little bit on the softer side here in the States, but this is a strong international franchise bringing in that 300 plus million after just a couple days. So congrats to Fast X over there on that front. Okay, that's the box office. And with that out the way, let's get into our news of the week. And uh, once again, just to let you know that if you are looking to watch any of the trailers or see more of the articles that we're talking about, because I'm only going to speak pretty briefly on each topic, uh, make sure that you go check out our social medias. You can check out our Twitter page, which I always think is the best, twitter.com slash am on the air, or our Facebook page, facebook.com slash am on the air, okay? Uh, We got some good new trailers that have come out, man. We got the first trailer for The Creator, which is a new sci-fi movie with uh, John David Washington. And this arrives in theaters on September 29th, uh, which looks really good. If you're into sci-fi, I think you're going to really like The Creator, so check that out. We finally got the new trailer for Mission Impossible, baby. That's right, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 hits theaters on July 12th. And this is a badass trailer, and it's about time because that other trailer's been playing for a year now. So I'm glad that we finally got something new to look at. Um, 
Ginny in Georgia has been renewed for a third and fourth season over on Netflix, so congratulations there. Eddie Murphy is uh, in negotiations to star in a Pink Panther reboot. That's right. Um, He is readying his magnifying glass as the actors in talks to star as Inspector Clouseau uh, in MGM's upcoming Pink Panther film. Now, supposedly, it will be a live-action animated hybrid uh, from the director of Sonic. So you've got the Pink Panther, you get Eddie kind of talking back and forth. Uh, you know, if you're going to do Pink Panther, do it a little bit different. I like the idea of it and uh, love Eddie Murphy. So let's, why not? Virgin River has been renewed for season six over at Netflix, and that's ahead of the season five premiere. So that's always a good sign. So congratulations there. A uh, show I really like over on Apple TV Plus, Physical with Rose Byrne, uh, has announced that it will end with its forthcoming third season. So first two seasons are out now to stream, third season's coming soon, and that will now be the final season. Uh, speaking of Rose Byrne, her new show with Seth Rogen Platonic actually debuted today over on Apple TV Plus. I am super looking forward to jumping into that show. I uh, just haven't had a chance yet before recording, so that'll definitely be one I'll be checking out this week. Um, platonic once again hitting Apple TV Plus today Physical ending with the upcoming third season Killing It Season 2 has added 8 new guest stars It's going to have Dot Marie Jones Katie Kershaw Joe Massengill Melanie Field Fatima Talia Beck Bennett Kyle Mooney And Tim Simmons This of course is uh, Craig Robinson's show over on Peacock Which I really liked I, I liked Killing It Season 1 So glad to see it stacking up Season 2 Sony Pictures, Film Slate Shakeup, My Ex-Friend's Wedding, and Horoscope have landed in 2024, um, along with Harold and the Purple Crayon, and They Listen has been pushed back as well. So check out the full Sony Film Slate that we have posted up. Amy Schumer's new stand-up special, Amy Schumer Emergency Contact, will premiere on June 13th over on Netflix. Sex in the City fans, are you ready? Max has announced, and just like that, Season 2 is going to be debuting on June 22nd. So there you go for those of you waiting on that one. Conan O'Brien returns. That's right, the former late-night host is now filming a four-episode international travel series that will also be airing on Max. TBS is reviving the Joe Schmo Show. That's right, the hoax reality format will now be hosted by Kat Dealey. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, I love the Joe Schmo show. I actually have the box set of season one on DVD on my movie rack. Um, This was a show that came out in the early 2000s. And if you've never heard of the Joe Schmo show, it was a reality show that was all a prank. It was like a, a real world scenario where everybody was living in this house And everyone was an actor except for one guy. It was a prank show on him, making him feel like he was in this weird ass reality show. And at the end, he won a bunch of money and it was, ha ha, we got you, jokes on you. They did a second, I think they maybe even did a third season of it. And it was never quite as good as the first season, but it was a fun concept and I really dug it. And then, you know, about a month ago or so, there was a new show on Freebie called Jury Duty. And I reviewed it right here on this show. I watched Jury Duty and I loved it. And if you go back to my review, I think one of the th- main things I said is that Jury Duty reminds me of the Joe Schmo show, which is kind of funny because it's the success of Jury Duty that helped revive the Joe Schmo show. So uh, Jury Duty is doing so well and people love the concept of what they did there that they're going back to the well here. So I love it. I'll be watching and I'm excited. It's going to be coming to TBS, man. So looking forward to the new season of the Joe Schmo show, which I don't think is going to debut until next year. Uh, But there's a little teaser trailer up for it now that you can check out. Selena Gomez is set to host two new food network series, including a show set in chef's own kitchens. So there you go. That'll be coming soon. Michael Bay uh, is going to be doing a new true crime documentary series over on investigation discovery. Um, pretty awesome there. It's going to come out in 2024. Uh, love me some Michael Bay and he wants to do some investigation discovery. I'm down. I'll check it out. Mr. Bay. I'll check it out. Uh, Ant-Man, the Wasp quantum mania is now streaming over on Disney plus. We have your 21 best new movies to stream in May. So you can check out that article and see if there's something there that you would like to watch. 
things like, like I said, Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania on Disney+. Plus. We have things like Air over on Prime Video. A Man Called Otto with Tom Hanks over on Netflix. So make sure you check that stuff out and see where your favorite is streaming. The Penguin, the show with uh, Colin Farrell there based off the Batman, has been delayed due to the writer's strike. So yes, the writer's strike is still going and is affecting a lot of shows. Um, we have an article up with Dave Filoni and a possible Star Wars movie title that might be for his upcoming film set in the Mandalorian universe. So I won't say what it is in case you figure it's a spoiler. So read the article if you're interested. Uh, Den of Thieves 2 looks like it's going to finally be moving forward. It's going to be called Den of Thieves 2 Pantera. Gerard Butler coming back with O'Shea Jackson set to lead uh, the new Christian Gudegas directed sequel. I love Den of Thieves, so looking very forward to a sequel to that. Ed Harris and Sequonia Martin-Green, along with Natalie Morales, have joined the new veteran dramedy My Dead Friend Zone. Squid Game Reality Competition Series is set a November premiere date over on Netflix. Um, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 will hit theaters July 12th. And Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 is slated to hit theaters on June 28th, 2024. So that's how you do a two-parter. One year apart. Fast X making me wait till 2025. That's how you do it, baby. That's how you do it. All right. Um... Let's see here. Clive Owen is joining Daisy Ridley in her new action thriller, The Cleaner. Martin Scorsese reuniting with his longtime muse, Leonardo DiCaprio, for Apple's Killers of the Flower Moon. And we have the first trailer for that to check out, which will be hitting theaters for a couple weeks and then will show up on Apple TV+. Mads Mikkelsen's hitman actioneer, The Black Kaiser, has casted Vanessa Hutchins to join the cast. Dozens of titles are going to be pulled off Disney Plus and Hulu as early as next week. Things even like Willow and Dollface, um, a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I did see an article earlier today that said Disney has actually pulled the list back and they're looking it over again and reviving what will be pulled down. So, um, stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Sam, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's Alternate Side parking regulations, we discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing. Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see what sticks or what doesn't, but right now, things like Willow, The Mysterious Benedict Society, Dollface, movies like The One and Only Ivan, those are all Disney Plus exclusives, gonna be gone. So, um, yeah, we'll see if anything changes there, but... Uh, They are looking to scale back the content over there between Hulu and Disney+. Plus. The Futurama revival over at Hulu has set its premiere date, and it has dropped its first teaser trailer, so make sure you check that out if that's your thing. Uh, The Old Guard uh, has finished the part two that they've been filming, and uh, the sequel, they're saying that the sequel ending demands a third movie. Interesting. They're going to try to layer that up for a third film? Uh, I like the old guard. Uh, I'm hoping the sequel will be better than the first, uh, and we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. The CW has set Sophie Turner's new drama, Joan, and the Librarian spinoff for 2024 premieres. Um, So there you go. The CW has still made no decision on Gotham Knights, Superman and Lois, and All-American Homecoming. So we'll have to wait and see on those. Deadpool 3 is officially going to feature the return of Negasonic Teenage Warhead and Yukio. That's right. Uh, Hi, Wade. Hi, Yukio. Uh, So good little additions there for Deadpool 3. Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about the disappointing news on the twin sequel. Um, The interesting article here of what he says happened on the twins sequel, which would have been triplets. So check that out. Uh, We have the trailer for Full Circle, which is going to be coming to Max. It's a new limited series. Manifest Season 4 teaser trailer has just dropped for the final chapter of the Netflix sci-fi drama. The Blackening has dropped its final trailer for its upcoming um, comedy movie. 
It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia Season 16 teaser trailer, baby. Check it out. I know a lot of you love It's Always Sunny. That's just a show I never got into, man. Just couldn't do it. We also have the trailer for Theater Camp, which uh, previews Ben Platt's new mockumentary comedy. Love me some mockumentaries, so let's go. Uh, Manifest will be landing on Netflix on June 2nd, by the way. Um, we have your first reactions to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Seems kind of mixed. Some people love it. Some people don't. Um, read the rest for your own decision there. Transformers Rise of the Beast is eyeing a $68 million to a $70 million opening over at the box office. Nicolas Cage is going to battle a gang of surfers in a new psychological thriller called The Surfer. Jackie Chan is in talks to return as his Mr. Han character for a new Karate Kid movie. Mm, very interesting. Killers of the Flower Moon will be hitting theaters on October 6th. Uh, for those of you wondering when that'll hit. And then, like I said, it'll be Apple TV Plus after. A live action Powerpuff, Diggle's Justice You, and the female Zorro are all shows that are no longer in development over at the CW. So these are all shows that were announced and then they were filming pilots and things kind of kept going back and forth. It is official. They are no longer in development at the CW. We have your 2023 to 2024 TV preview. Every new comedy, drama, unscripted show coming to CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox, and of course the CW. So check that out if you're interested. Um, there you go. The CW has also nabbed a big budget Euro series called The Swarm. So that'll be coming to the U.S. very soon. Um, let's see. We got an article up talking about the Fast X post credit scene. So check that out if you'd like to know a little bit more about what was going on there. Moana star Alia Cravalho. She will not be reprising her role uh, as Moana in the live action remake, she says, I'm honored to pass the baton. It sounds like it's an age thing. When she, she said when she signed on to do Moana, she was 14 years old and now she's 21 or 22. And she just, you know, it sounds like she aged out of the role and she wants to pass the baton and really make it pop for whoever takes on this role. So very, very big of her. Cause of course the way the announcement came out made it sound like she was going to play the live action Moana, obviously the rock playing the live action Maui. Um, so, you know, good on her for making that decision there. Congrats to the John wick franchise, which officially passed the billion dollar mark. So that is awesome, man. Billion dollar club, John wick. Um, Borat 2 breakout star Maria Bakalova is going to be starring in My Masterpiece, um, which is coming from Sylvester Stallone's Balboa Productions. Rumor has it that Jeff Loveness, who was writing Avengers King Dynasty, is uh, off the movie. That's right. Uh, Sounds like there might have been some conflict and people didn't like what he was doing with King Dynasty. So they're going to go a different direction. Um, Once again, this has not been confirmed by Marvel, but it sounds like pretty much this has happened here, uh, that he is off the film. Kevin Feige also reportedly thought Echo was unreleasable before they did some reshoots. Uh, So they did fix it up a little bit, but it still sounds like they don't have a lot of faith, which is something I talked about on last week's show, since they said Echo is going to be a full binge dump, which is something Disney Plus has never done before. Sonic Prime Season 2 is coming to Netflix very soon. Uh, Rumor also had it that Emma Stone was the first choice for the MCU Sue Storm for the Fantastic Four. Uh, but it sounds like she wanted too much money and they ended up passing. So kind of interesting there, man. I, I, in my mind, I don't really see Emma Stone as Sue Storm. I like Emma Stone too, but I just, I don't really see it compared to like, you know, we've been hearing rumors like Margot Robbie and Vanessa Kirby and, uh, Jodie Comer, people like that. They all work for me. Emma just sounds off for this role. So I'm kind of glad she passed on that. Um, Mortal Kombat 2, Tati Gabrielle is in talks to play Jade. Love this. She is awesome. That'll be a cool Jade. I am down. Uh, Bambi, The Reckoning. The horror film has secured distribution rights in multiple territories. That's right. We talked about this a while ago. That, uh, open domain, man. That, uh, they can do whatever they want with these characters. So Bambi, The Reckoning. Uh, we had, you know, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Now we're getting Bambi the Reckoning coming soon. New horror movie there. Uh, Law and Order exclusive. Molly Burnett is leaving ahead of season 25. Aziz Ansari's movie Good Fortune has been suspended indefinitely due to the writer's strike. 
Uh, and this one sucks, man. Aziz Ansari, is, uh, this is his directorial debut. He was working with Seth Rogen and Keanu Reeves. And now the film is shutting down indefinitely, which really, really sucks. I love Aziz, and that sucks for him that that's happening. Um, Kiefer Sutherland is joining Nicholas Holt in Clint Eastwood's Jern number two. Um, Fast X earned $28 million on Friday. Um, and then another 22.43 million on Saturday and an estimated 17 million on Sunday, which brought it to that $67 million. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is joining the cast of Bob Dylan's new movie, uh, the Bob Dylan biopic, a complete unknown. So that has been rumored for a while. Glad to hear it's official there for Benedict amateur cast. The new thriller has added Rachel Brosanahan and Lawrence Fishburne to the cast. So very cool there. Um, Shit, my chair is stuck on my mic cord. Oh, all right, I got it. Sorry, guys. Hopefully that did not just chop my cord up. I was like, what am I stuck? I'm stuck. We have the trailer for Shooting Stars, um, which is uh, the Stranger Things star leads the new LeBron James movie that they're doing there, and that's coming to Peacock. Benicio Del Toro has joined Wes Anderson's next movie cast. Ben Kingsley and Sofia Boutella are joining Dave Batista's new action comedy, The Killer's Game. Uh, Hulu is offering a subscription for just two bucks a month, and we got the list up there on how to sign up for that. Um, 320 million globally for Fast X. Again, congratulations. It's such a massive, massive hit for them. We have another new look at Secret Invasion. That's right. Uh, Marvel Studios Secret Invasion is hitting Disney Plus finally on June 21st. I feel like I've been waiting for this show forever. This is the Nick Fury led show, and this new look is awesome, and I'm very, very excited for this one. Uh, American Born Chinese is a new original series hitting Disney Plus on May 24th. This one looks pretty good. It's from the director of Shang-Chi, so check that out if you're interested. Um, China box office, Fast X has the Hollywood best opening of 2023. So congratulations there in China for Fast X. Um, let's see here. Vin Diesel, uh, talks about the post credit scenes as well. So check out that article if you're interested. Tony Collette and Zoe Dutch are also joining Kiva Sutherland and Nicholas Holt in the next Clint Eastwood film for that juror number two. It's really ramping up. It's casting there. Um, And some really sad news that hit out of nowhere, Ray Stevenson passed away yesterday at the age of 58, man. How sad is that? Uh, Of course, he was Volstagg in the Thor movies. He was in RRR. He was the Punisher in Punisher Warzone. Uh, He's done a lot, man. He was a villain in one of the Dexter seasons. I loved Ray Stevenson. And I can't believe he passed, man. It was such a bummer to hear this yesterday, especially at the age of 58, man. Um, Way, way too young. So definitely our thoughts and prayers go out to his family and friends. All right. One of my favorite shows is Power. And, of course, Power has all its spinoffs, right? Well, the best spinoff. Tommy, man, Tommy fucking Egan, uh, power book four or three. I don't even remember what book it is. Force is the power force. Uh, it is book four power book Four. force is coming back to stars for season two on September 1st. I'm so excited about this. Tommy is such a great character. I'm so glad he has his own show. Uh, he just popped up on last week's episode of ghost, which was great to see, man. When he popped up, I was like, yeah, it's Tommy. Uh, so glad to see you with a little teaser trailer here, uh, getting us ready for the season premiere on September 1st, coming to stars. Uh, Elo Cool J is going to be joining NCIS Hawaii for season three. So congratulations there. Uh, he was on NCIS LA, I think, which just had its series finale. So kind of interesting there that he's going to kind of move over there and be a guest star. For all of season three. So we'll see if he ends up sticking around or not. On that one. Um, So Max. Officially launched today. And um, you do have to download a new app. By the way. So whether you have it on your phone or your TV. The HBO Max app will not update. And it won't work anymore. So if you click it. It's going to tell you to download Max. 
Um, but with its priciest plan, which is $19.99 a month, it will have over a thousand plus movies and episodes in 4K Ultra HD that will also have Dolby Atmos sound, which is awesome. So that is the package I have. I need my 4K stuff and I love it. So make sure you check out Max. I was playing around with it earlier today. Uh, it's pretty nice, man. I mean, it's basically HBO Max, except it's blue now instead of purple. Uh, and it does have all the Discovery Plus stuff. So I went through, and you can watch things from Food Network, from True TV, um, from um, in- Investigation Discovery, the Travel Channel, um, HGTV. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on there, man, on top of all the other hubs like HBO and DC and the Wizardly World of Harry Potter. Um, all that stuff is on Max now. And so I got to go cancel my Discovery Plus uh, subscription because I don't need it anymore because it's on Max. Uh, so, yeah, so definitely check that out uh, if you haven't yet. Joaquin Phoenix is going to be teaming up with Tom ha- Todd Haynes for a new NC-17 rated gay romance film. There you go. Paramount Plus with Showtime is going to launch in the U.S. next month as the standalone Showtime app will be shut down by the end of 2023. So right now, you can add Showtime to your Paramount Plus subscription, but starting next month, they're going to combine it all into one app. You can't get Showtime by itself anymore. You're going to get Showtime with Paramount Plus. It's going to be a new integrated thing uh, that basically is like 12 bucks a month, and you're getting Paramount Plus and Showtime ad-free. It's incredible. I love this app. Um, and I'm glad to see it, man. Showtime's got a lot of great stuff. Paramount Plus has got a lot of great stuff, so it's a win-win on this app here combining. We have the trailer for The Color Purple, so make sure you check that out. New musical uh, coming to you from Oprah Oprah Winfrey and Steven Spielberg. CBS has set its premiere date, so check that out to see what's coming this summer. We also have your lineup of contents uh, all being on Max starting today and running through June of 2023. The last thing he told me over on Apple TV Plus has achieved its most watched limited series ever since the streamers launched in 2019. So congratulations to Jennifer Garner and team for having Apple TV Plus most watched limited series ever. Uh, Vin Diesel says that Fast and Furious spinoffs are in the works, including a female-led movie. There you go. Because remember, Fast X is supposed to be the end of the main saga, but he always said they were going to do spinoffs of different characters. Um, bring in new characters and that the world will continue to live on as a whole. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, James Gunn confirms whether or not the high evolutionary died in guardians of the galaxy volume three. So check that out. If you would like to know what happened to his fate, uh, Netflix is, uh, going to be releasing a new Kevin Hart heist comedy called lift. So that'll be coming out this summer. Extraction 3, Chris Hemsworth says he already has an idea for another sequel. So not greenlit yet, but Chris Hemsworth has some ideas, which I love. Ron Perlman and Rosanna Arquette are going to star in a new horror thriller called Succubus. Um, Let's see. Michelle Randolph and Jacob Laughlin have joined Billy Bob Thornton in the upcoming Taylor Sheridan series, Land uh, Landman, which will be coming to Paramount+. Plus. Ali Larder will also star in the series as well. Netflix is officially going to be launching its page sharing in the U S and it's going to start blocking users with unauthorized passwords starting next month. So get ready to pay up. We told you this was coming. If you're sharing your Netflix password with someone who doesn't live with you, get ready to pay up. It's going to cost you seven 99 a month to uh, extra to add another user to your account. So they're going to be checking to make sure that everything comes from your household. And if it doesn't, It's going to be time to pay the piper. Pay the piper. We have the final trailer for The Flash. Yes, they released one more trailer. I did watch it. It's awesome. And the movie comes out in about a month, a little under a month, June 16th. Uh, Tickets went on sale today as well. I got my preview night, June 15th, IMAX tickets ready to roll, baby. I'm so excited for The Flash. So uh, great, great final trailer for that. Alan Richson reveals that Keanu Reeves almost played a role in Fast X. In fact, it was his role. That's right. Originally, Keanu Reeves was going to play the role that Alan Richson was. And due to scheduling conflicts, had to drop out. And Alan Richson stepped in. So uh, very, very interesting to hear there. And hopefully they'll get Keanu maybe in the next one, right? We're running out of time. Uh, Skull Island is getting an anime animated series over on Netflix, uh, and that's going to be coming soon. Very highly anticipated there. 
The new film May December uh, Netflix has won the U.S. distribution rights For the upcoming Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman drama Matt Berry is in talks to join Jason Momoa In the video game movie Minecraft Night Agent star Gabriel Basso is in talks to join Clint Eastwood's final film, Juror Number 2 Told you we keep talking about that one there um, We got an article up with Joseph Sikora We just talked about uh, Tommy Egan and Power um, and uh, for season two, he breaks down uh, a bunch of different stuff like his upcoming season, his surprise return on Ghost. Uh, so check out that article if you'd like to see a little bit more on the inside there. Um, Comcast has unveiled its plans for a new twenty dollar a month streaming package called Now TV. So basically, this isn't anything crazy. This is just for people that have Comcast. And maybe you're looking to cancel TV and just keep the internet package. This is something where you can have some channels uh, on streaming on their little free streamer box for just 20 bucks a month. So you still get some TV, they get some revenue, and it's a win-win, right? So nothing too crazy. It's not something that anybody else would sign up for uh, if you didn't um, have Xfinity already. So, And on that note, that is the end. Of our show, we've reached the end here We're going on right around 40 minutes there Not too shabby, so Thank you so much for tuning in tonight And joining me as we got you caught up with all the latest And the greatest, I really Appreciate it, uh, let's do some plugs Amiontheair.com is our official Webpage, make sure you bookmark that It's got everything you need there, links to all the Socials, the quick bites uh, All our episodes right there Amiontheair.com, it doesn't get any easier Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Amiontheair, follow me on Twitter at DX Don Mega. Make sure you like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash am I on the air. Uh, for everything, all the trailers, everything you want to see, you could find it in a nice little sweet spot there. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spreaker Stitcher Tune In. We're on everything, guys. So make sure you subscribe on whatever podcast feed you like to listen to. And make sure you leave us a thumbs up or a five star scale. Uh, to really help us out, we'd appreciate it Make sure you follow us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube um, Of course, over on TikTok and Instagram I do video reviews So they're really cool to watch on there It's exclusive to those apps uh, Of course on YouTube is where we stream our you know, Am I still on the airs and everything So make sure you subscribe to the channel And thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. So make sure you follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio, all one word. RedDragonsRadio.com is the webpage. And follow on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros for them. Always uh, backing up Am I on the Air, always streaming our episodes on demand, along with a lot of other great podcasts. So thank you to Red Dragons Radio and Pop Culture Pros. And that'll do it for me here on this Tuesday, May the 23rd. I hope you all have an amazing night. And I'll be back next week. For another new edition of Am I on the Air. So until next time, y'all, take care of yourselves and each other. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Red Dragons! Red Dragons!